my god, you look so sexy with your new haircut. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to an Anime Club After Dark special, our final Sarah's and my episode review. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and as you just heard from that sigh, joining me tonight I have our chivalry of Shota's Shotaro. Young money? <laughs> Good lord. So yeah, show, it's the last episode, we're finally here. We're finally Um... I, I, huh. this there's a lot to unpack, but there's also not that much to unpack. There's more to unpack about our overall thoughts of Sarah's and my, but before we do that, I definitely got to talk about how the show itself ended. Um, so we got, so from the last episode, we know that Toei, I keep calling him Toei, it's Toei. Um, Toei went inside of Dark Kepi more or less winky monkey i know right wink wink wink. um and he was followed in by essentially otter version of his brother chikai um who's trying to manipulate him and he's basically running him through a bunch of memories that he has and he gives him a gun and it says if you shoot yourself in these memories you basically won't exist anymore people will forget you and you can do whatever you want from there kids uh don't listen to that little voice in your head when you're tripping on acid yeah for sure i i had to be honest with you, the way this scene is portrayed drugs had to be involved in some way in writing this uh in many ways um i thought during this whole scene where toy was uh, talking with hallucination Chikai about um, just like random philosophical things. It really clicked for me that like they keep repeating this uh, concept of going outside the circle. And then there's always this image of like a Venn diagram of having no beginning, no end and no connection. And I think those concepts are the same. And that whole idea is the same as what we've been introduced to losing your Shira Kodama is. Mm -hmm. And basically, which means, like, you don't exist anymore. It's, yeah, it's not even that you don't exist now. It's that you never existed at all. Yes. So in, like, so basically what it's saying is that your, what you comprise of as a person is who you connect with and what kind of connections you have and that's yeah. what defines you yeah which is a which is a good say. which is a good philosophical point to make and it's like throughout the course of your life you're going to make connections well most people are going to make connections with many many people and a lot of those people will define you by the connections you make with others and I'm not saying that the connections you have define necessarily define who you are, but it can define how others perceive you. A tree is defined by who hears it <laughs> fall in the forest. That is very deep. Um, but am I wrong? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I mean. you you get what I mean though. Like it's we, we've said it in the last i think two reviews that we've done it's an interesting thought experiment it the like is is it better to have no connections with anyone and live your life truly alone or risk getting hurt for the chance to have connections with people i don't do you think that thought experiment was like brought up by the show I don't, it's something that it's something that I thought about throughout the course of this episode, especially when they had that whole going outside the circle thing, where it's like essentially these connections that you have with these other people. It's like you're defining yourself through your, these connections. It's like, well, is it better to not e to to risk being alone and not having any connections, or risk being hurt and having a bunch of connections? Well, it may not be what the show was going for explicitly, but it's something I thought about while watching this. If you don't have connections, you don't exist, Alex. Exactly. 
But you do have some really, really good butt sex. So <laughs> that's that's the give or anal take. beads because that's what they turn into. Let's be honest. I mean, anal beads can be involved in butt sex. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Th- go ahead. You are all over the place, not um, not really. I, I, <laughs> I don't. I, I. I. genuinely don't know if that's what's being implied here, but it is. Like I say, it's something I thought about when they kept saying the going outside the circle stuff. You know what I thought about when they kept saying, uh, about having about having connections. Mm. I'm I watching Kiznaiver. <laughs> <laughs> this episode really reminded me of Kiznaiver in that. Yeah, you know, I didn't. It even was think all about like that, but I you're connect right. to you. You connect to me. Connections surreal. I oh my god, philosophy. I did, not, <laughs> I did not even think about that, but you're you're right. I, it's kind of what Kiznaiver was going for. Um, at least what I always thought Kiznaiver was going for. Yeah. God, imagine if Kiznaiver had been this well animated. Oh my god, it was at some point in its run. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I thought that I just it just reminded me of because I didn't even make that connection. That's amazing. That I, connection. I completely agree, though. I know I, did, I didn't make that connection. Wink, wink. Um, but no, I, I didn't. I never even thought about that when I was uh, watching this. But you're right. You're absolutely right. It's kind of what Kiznaiver was trying to do. And failed. And yeah, I would. Yeah, sadly. Because as we have seen with Sarah Zenmai, it's a good concept if you can do it right. And did Sarah Zenmai do it right? Let's find out well, at the end of this review. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Title core. <laughs> um, no, so, um, so throughout this journey that Toei's taking and basically destroying him, his old self in these memories, they're eventually getting to the memory where... Uh, Toei gives the Misanga to um, Kazuki back when they first met. And they get to that point, and that, of course, that's when all the philosophizing is going on. And then Toei decides to turn around and shoot the Chikai, uh, I guess we'll call it a hallucination. Um, and he falls apart. And the Chikai hallucination almost seems happy about this. Almost. I was like, yes! Okay. Throughout this whole thing, I think I've said this in... the Was it the last? Whatever episode where... <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, don't break <laughs> your computer. Whatever episode where um, Chikai died, um, I've been thinking... Toei, you need to ditch this loser and get over him. And he's been a shit influence on you your entire life. Mm -hmm. So you need to pull yourself together and be your own independent gay. Be your own boss, boy. Yes. Uh, Work it, queen. No, but uh, I'm so glad when he shot Chikai. Because I'm like, okay, you are over him. You are going to be strong, independent, queer, and work it for yourself. Get that <laughs> money the right way. But after he shoots Chikai, he just keeps going with shooting himself. He's like, I shoot you and I shoot me. Double suicide, bitch. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I thought you were over the bad influence, but like you still you still hate yourself. So, okay. You still mm. you still mourning on the inside. Yeah, um, I, oh, um, yeah, but then I don't know how to transition to what happens next LOL. easily. <laughs> I really don't. Um, so, so he ends ahead. up, he, you have, you probably have a better idea of how to transition. This oh, to. I don't know. He ends up actually shooting himself or his past self. And then they all, I mean, Enta and Kazuki are also in dark Kepi. did they go in mm-hmm. to save him i forgot yeah they're going they're going in to save him basically from himself and so basically the Kepi hallucination memory like melts into some limbo place and they start falling into a vortex and they each of them get their own little separate flashbacks where 
they're remembering their times with each other, but mm-hmm. they themselves are getting erased from the memories because they've lost their connection. Because I, why? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I guess why are they? Because they're dying. I don't know. Something. I think it's it's because they're. I think it's because their past selves are dying. That's what I took out of it. Sure. <laughs> Which is, if you think about it, destroying destroying your own past memories would be like your past self dying. Okay, so I can understand Toei dying because he it literally kills himself. But I don't know why Enta and Kazuki are losing their past memories as well. I think it's not so much that they're losing their memories. It's that they're losing their memories of him. Maybe. Either way, someone's losing someone's memories. Um, (laughs) And they each have this, like, epiphany. Um, So Kazuki's epiphany is that he has been waiting for, quote-unquote, a hand that would pull him out of his stubbornness. And his stubbornness being that... That he can't accept Enzo's feelings. No. (laughs) Yes, but that's not what... His stubbornness was that he couldn't, uh, like, rid himself of the irrational guilt he felt for, you know, uh, for Haruka losing his ability to, to walk, and also his stubbornness that he can't accept uh, himself as a part of his new non-blood-related family. And yeah. he knew, so him calling it stubbornness means he knew it was irrational, his feelings were irrational, and he should just accept it, but he just needed someone to push him into, um, you know, getting over all his insecurities and, yeah, like, feeling comfortable with all these things. So, I mean, we already knew all of this, so this is just, like, him... That's kind of what this whole thing has been leading to, really. And he, and it is what actually happened in yeah. in the events. Like Enta and Toei pushed him uh, to his limits, and he finally got over it, which is great. Yeah. Um, and which then actually is what happened back in what episode seven? Yeah. Yeah. Where they kind of like Haruka and him had made up, and the sort of, he gets the Haruka head pat, and it's like okay, I'm yeah. over it now. And then Enta's epiphany is that. He's been waiting for his hopeless fantasies to get blown to bits, which was really harsh. Um, I like how Kazuki's epiphany was so like uplifting and healing and you get closure from it. But then Enta is just like, nah, I get a bad ending for me. It's just like, I just want to be fucking punched in the face, bitch. <laughs> what? Um, apparently, Which he kind of was. He was, actually. <laughs> I like how yeah, okay, this is, <laughs> I like how he tried to punch Kazuki back, but then he's like, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway. You um, weak bitch. Yeah, so that was really dark. But I, I don't know if the show wants it to be... A healing moment like to get over the hope like there are they're hopeless fantasies so and they're they're hopeless and they're fantasies so i think that part of this this revelation is him realizing that it was a hopeless fantasy i guess so because before it i think he had just seen it as a fantasy but now he realizes it was a hopeless fantasy i mean i would like accept this better if Kazuki would have just rejected him. But the, the, just, uh. <laughs> Kazuki won't do that because he hasn't even acknowledged the fact that he has feelings for him. Exactly. Oh my god. But sure. I mean okay, the, <laughs> if we okay. Ah! It's skipping ahead, but compose yourself. <laughs> I still don't accept that it's a hopeless fantasy. But apparently the show thinks it is. Anyway, Enza either, certainly thinks it is. Either way, I think this realization is really harsh. And that's just what I think. I don't know what you think. I, I think it kind of leads into what I said in the last review about Enza su- supposedly representing self-doubt. I don't think he knows 
what it is that he really wants. And I think that he'll never, he never seems to realize what he wants. He wants a D. Well, yes, but <laughs> it's not going to be Kazuki's D. Yes, it will be. Don't worry. Okay, next. You and okay. your headcanon. Oh my God, that is not a headcanon. Um, so the last man on this list, Toei, his uh, epiphany is that he's been waiting for the lead-colored crime he'd embrace to finally kill him, which is basically saying he wants to repent for killing a Yakuza at... It also it also reveals something that we were suspicious of from a much earlier episode and is now completely confirmed is that he knows he's the one that killed that Yakuza. I don't know what you're talking about. We knew he knew... From like the moment it was revealed, remember? Yeah, but but now it's definite confirmation that he knows. Before it's like, well, I guess perhaps he knows, but now it's like he knows. Okay, if you say so. Um, I thought okay again, Kazuki's what epiphany was so healing, and then Toei's epiphany is so like sad and depressing. But I I can this one I. I can agree with, like I can well, understand, but it's still it's so depressing. Like, it's almost like his brother had to die for him to actually come to accept what he'd done. Like he may have realized what he'd done in the past, but I don't think he ever really accepted what he did, or at least not to himself. I think and it's like he, well, his brother's dead. No one else can save me from it. I think he may have repented for what he did by so doggedly following his brother. I think that Maybe. might have been what was going on there. Maybe. Maybe. So those were the three epiphanies in the yeah, vortex. As you, as you say, Kazuki's is pretty uplifting and pretty like you see that there could be like a future from this or at least a, a somewhat happy future from it. And then you hear Inta and Toei's and it's like, there's no happiness here. <laughs> there's only despair. I, but it, and again, it also kind of plays into this this concept of sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you can actually make your life better. And maybe they're both hitting rock bottom. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure Toei has hit a lot of rock bottom. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so this is uh, Kepi calls this the last Sarah Zenmai, um, which kind of tells you where this this story is definitely heading for a conclusion no second seasons here um and i do want to point out um so the the sort of i guess you would say it's not really a kappa zombie is it because it's kepi kepi's fighting with dark kepi that sarah zanmai sequence was so trippy i couldn't tell up it was it was but that that's essentially what's happened happening it's basically kepi fighting with dark kepi um, I do want to point out there's a really interesting reference. Um, I don't know if it's interesting, but it, it's it's certainly a classic reference within anime um, because it's happened quite a bit. Also, this re- the exact same reference was made in the Monogatari series at one point um, that um, when the fight is over and Kepi is like, I've defeated Dark Kepi, and he comes back and he has like his arm out and he kind of slowly creeps toward the screen, that's an Ultraman reference. Good to know. I'll write it in um, my diary. That's that's it. a lot of anime make that ref- that Ultraman reference. It's also made very famously in Monogatari series with Shinobu. I just wanted to point that out because I thought it was it was really great to include that. Good to know. More importantly, and- we get to see Kepi's <laughs> prince form. Welcome to My Little Pony. <laughs> oh my god, my favorite <laughs> anime. Uh, uh- <laughs> It's Friendship strong. truly is magic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Kebby's prince form was something to behold. Um. And actually, I'm I'm sort of jumping ahead just a bit, but I just want to say we also get to see uh Azuma Sarah's princess form shortly she after is we see the prince like form. Wearing like a thong and all skin. Mm-hmm. She's a strip of princess. She basically. Um. Um. Also, I want figures of both of them. Please don't in their prince and princess form. Please, please, please don't like ingratiate the furries, please. Wow, so racist. 
Anyway, so something that does happen also after this fight is over is we get the last leaking scene. It is by far the longest leaking scene in the entire show. Um, and the the leaking scene goes over all of the end titles. They're, they're basically repeated, and they're shown for kind of the context they're meant to be taken in. What do you mean? Like, each of the each of the end titles, you're shown like a vignette of kind of what it means going into the future. Because one of the things it says right before this leaking scene is that this is going to happen. Okay. <laughs> but, like, they also meant something when in their respective episodes. Oh, true, 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 true. Yeah. But this is show this is showing it to you like bluntly. Yes. Um I thought it was genius for them to reuse the um title cards to um to apply to different scenarios in the future because the whole title card um plot device, I guess not a plot device, it's like a directing device was really It's an imp- art direction thing, yeah. Yes. Was uh really impactful throughout the, the uh, show. So then really taking a hold of that device and spinning it to make it uh, have a new meaning. I thought that was really great because I even, I personally love the end titles, how they use them. Mm-hmm. And this whole sequence of what happens in the future was so emotional. It was the, it was the emotional climax that I wanted and I finally See, got. I told you I last episode it would got surprise an you. Climax. Do you know? Okay, I was so um, annoyed up until this point in this episode because all this bullshit was happening. Like I couldn't tell left from right. All those explosions were happening, and I'm like, I just I don't care about your explosive keppy bullshit. I want to. I want what is happening with my boys. <laughs> so no, I told you. I told you last time. You were like, I'm really hoping they don't have this action packed thing. And like, I'm thinking, well, it'll surprise you. It surprised you, did it not? It was so good. I was <laughs> so impressed. So you were crying, weren't you? No, but I was. Yeah, you. You I was, liar. I was. You my liar. jaw was on the ground, and I had like a hot piping cup of tea, and I was like slowly sipping it. And like mm. I had my monocle reading this beautiful, beautiful uh, sequence. Anyways, so I don't know if we have to go through this entire sequence. But... I mean, we. I mean, it, it basically shows it shows the future. I mean, if you want to go through it all, we can. We have it written down. Okay, fine. So the first episode's title card was "I want to connect, but I want to take," and in the future, that means that. Kazuki, Enta, and Toei will be playing professional soccer, and they'll want to take a shot at the goal, which I thought was an interesting play on words. I don't know how that translates from Japanese to English, but that worked out. Um, The second episode was, I want to connect, but it's not meant to be, which in the future means that Kazuki will get a leg injury playing soccer, and he will go through rehab and, you know he will question whether he'll be able to continue his career as a soccer player. And let me just say, like, all this is so emotional. Like... You, you were you, crying. No. But, like, <laughs> you, like having such huge dreams of being a professional soccer player, it's, like, something that is so very unlikely. And then just seeing that it's possible, just that in and of itself is really really inspiring so i thought that in itself was a super emosh um third episode title card was i want to connect but i can't be forgiven which in the future meant toei going to jail which was really hard impact on the can't be forgiven um (laughs) that's like oh shit well i love all these double meanings because all these title cards had huge meanings in their respective episodes, and now they're getting even more. Um, the fourth episode was I Want to Connect, but We'll Never Meet Again, which in the future meant... Well, it's it shows a generic man walking away dramatically from Enta on a bridge while Enta is crying, and I interpreted that 
as Kazuki breaking up with Enta. You so want them to get together. I mean, who else would get together with Enta? It ain't happening. Okay. I anyway. do think that there's. I do think the implication is that someone is breaking up with Enta, but it's not Kazuki. I also could entertain that interpretation, but I, but like. I feel like they would have made it more obvious. Like, they would have made it a different hair color. It's like the same hair color and a similar hairstyle as Kotsky. Maybe that's just his type. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he found someone that looks like Kotsky. Maybe he fucks them and then thinks of Kotsky while he's fucking them. Okay. Okay, the fifth title card <laughs> is I want to connect, but I want to lie. And in the future, that means that. Kazuki will go into a deep depression when his leg is broken and he will throw away his team soccer picture uh, saying that he doesn't care anymore about um, soccer and his team and anything, which is obviously a lie, um, which is interesting. The sixth episode was titled, I want to connect, but I want to betray, uh, which in the future means that well, it shows that Toei leaves his Masanga in the locker room and then walks away from the team, which I interpreted as Toei switching teams. Which, okay, I'm not into soccer, but I'm... <laughs> I, okay, I don't follow soccer, but uh, I feel like like star players switch between teams. Like That's not unheard of, right? I mean, well, oh no, in professional soccer, there's a lot of team switching to go in professional sports in general it does um so it's not unheard of right so, so I, you mm -hmm. you could actually be right i mean it could also mean that he's just giving up soccer i thought that it would it would make more sense if you switch teams because it's betray yeah, that would right? be a betrayal betray, right yeah so maybe and maybe he's do maybe the implication is is he's doing it not because he still wants to be with kazuki and inta but because he's being offered more money it's because he wants to shoot the ball in Kazuki's net. Wink, wonk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone in this fucking anime is gay. I beg to differ <laughs> on that point. Uh, so, <laughs> the seventh. Are we on? Yeah, the seventh episode yeah, seven. is I want to connect, but I can't. Uh, which in the uh, future is Kazuki, Enta, and Toei. Having a fist fight in the locker room, which turns into a sweaty threesome. Okay, that last no. part may have been uh, uh, my own fantasies. <laughs> the, the eighth episode. You, you hear? You hear that fan artist? You hear that? The eighth. I'm sure that's already fan art. The eighth episode is I want to connect, but I can't express it. Which uh, they did like a two second. Um, <laughs> a cutaway almost. Yeah, like a shot of enta crying um uh leaning on a wall and there's like a there's a small sliver of a bunk bed behind him so i just interpreted that as enta is rooming with kazuki and he's like so close to kazuki all the time and like he's sleeping beside him but not with him and he's like, oh, I really want to express that I want to sleep with you, not beside you, but I can't do it, so I'm going to cry by myself while you're gaunt in the washroom. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't you're done. so salty. <laughs> yep. So the ninth episode <laughs> was, I want to connect, but you're so far away, which in the future is, uh, again, Toei in jail, which is super, like, all this this entire arc with Toei has been so, so, so realistic. Like, hyper-realistic. <laughs> that, like, the, the, the type of realism you don't get with anime. Which is really uh, biting. Minus the whole Kappa thing. <laughs> yes, minus the whole Kappa thing. But it's really, uh, it really hits you in the feels. Because you don't suspect it to be so realistic. And then the tenth episode is, I want to connect, so I'm not giving up which in the future is kazuki being the lead forward and shooting the ball into the net and it's interesting that like and this is near the end of the whole 
leaking fucking mini mini episode mini seizure whatever they're happening yeah mini episode because it's so long um but as they're all like running through the field they're all saying something along the lines of like i hate you i don't want to be with you anymore (laughs) i don't want to connect with you i don't want to see you again but they even though they have all these feelings of hatred and um anger they still keep playing the metaphorical soccer game so they basically what it's saying is that they still they still want to connect with each other even though they've had rough times which is really adorable but also really like insightful and philosophical well it's also very very real because even the best of friendships have rough patches honey friendships only get stronger when you punch your friend in the fucking jaw and dislocate it and send him to the fucking mm. hospital. <clears throat> what? Bad bad memory? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, yeah, fighting with your, like, getting getting your feelings out uh, to your, the people that are close to you and, you know, working out the rough spots is obviously going to make you closer to those people. So this yeah. is, yeah. Again, very, very real. Yeah, so real. I love, I love Kappa butt sex. That's the that's the realest part here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the whole the whole leaking scene I thought was brilliantly done, and like you say, reusing the the end title cards I thought was a great artistic like. I thought directorially that was a great thing to do. Honey, you just hit me in the gut with the feels train. <laughs> oh, I ugh, literally so impressed i loved it loved it and that leads us to because this this whole time we've had the the ed playing like and and, you know you kind of get used to that and that's almost like a trope in anime you don't actually see the ed for the final episode the ed starts playing and you see like the final few scenes and so we actually get i guess what we would say the equivalent of an after credit scene is and um I guess you would say an actual credit scene because throughout the credit scene, what you see is Toei going basically to a juvenile detention center. So real. His, so he, real. What you the You see hell? his time there. You see all the, like, the, the stuff that he does there. He gets his head shaved. Okay. Can um, I just say, the credit scene started with shaving his head. And the first thing I thought was like, oh my God, you look so sexy with your new haircut. And I'm like, oh no, this is juvenile detention center. Oh no. He about to get butt raped. I went from one emotion to the other. (laughs) Bend over, buddy. But yeah, I I thought that whole that whole scene was again very realistic, very believable, and very well very well put together. And like the entire time through the entire um, what is it like PowerPoint show? What do you call? Yeah, it it was almost montage montage through the entire montage. (laughs) That's the word. Um. Toei's face was like completely like dead, dead inside. Yeah, completely like, emotionless for yeah, sure. Yeah, but like it really showed how he was properly repenting for his crimes. So I don't know that that credit scene got me so emotional. You cried. I know you cried. I may have. <laughs> <laughs> Just admit it. You cried. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah okay so that that all happens and of course the, the the ed song is playing over all this and you think well when the ed gets done that'll be it and also no, there's... sorry but oh, the ed song is like stand by me and no one's standing by toey <laughs> he's no he's basically alone, alone this his whole time um but no the, the the ed stops playing and you get another after credits scene and it's Toei being released in the de- detention center, and you find out that it's been three years. He's been in there for three years, so that would make he's fourteen when he goes in. This, uh, he's either seventeen or eighteen by the time yeah. he gets out. Okay, I was not expecting it to be that long. That's like such a huge chunk of your life. Well, yeah, that's kind of the idea of going to a detention center or a jail. <laughs> Well, it's I thought spent a while in there thinking about what you did. Well, I thought that like a jail. I mean, I thought okay. I don't know if this is appropriate in this <laughs> in this podcast, but I thought the purpose of a jail was to complete to, to um to uh, separate p- 
people who are going to like disrupt society from society and then a detention center is like more rehabilitatory well to be perfectly honest the point of both is to rehabilitate people but um, there's a are lot you, of are you debate sure? as to whether i don't think yeah. the, the point of a jail is to rehabilitate people the point of incarceration is to be it's to re- rehabilitate people there is a lot of debate as to whether that even works um, but that is not the scope of what we're talking about. Yeah, okay, this is um, like a whole different <laughs> conversation. Um, but getting back to what we were talking about, um, I-, I forgot what I was going. Oh, so he gets released. Um, his hair has grown back very nicely. Um, I was kind of half expecting him if if they showed him getting released that he would keep his old haircut from when he was in there. Um, and then he'd go back and no one would recognize him. Um, yes. No, he gets released. It's been three years, so he's either 17 or 18 by the time he gets out. Um, and then he goes back to the bridge where basically all of this started, where he first met Kazuki, and they had the big battle with Dark Kepi and everything. Um, and he's looking off, and he's kind of like just pondering to himself, and then he just jumps right off the fucking bridge in the water, and I thought... Shit! He, he spent three years in a detention, and the first thing he does when he gets out is try and kill himself. Oh, I don't think so. I think um, there's a lot of bridges in Japan that you can jump off safely. Oh, yeah, I know. But, the, I don't know, my first implication of seeing someone jump off a bridge is like, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and it's hard to get over that. Um, But... Then you see that, like, the very next thing you see is, um, underwater, of course, is Kazuki and Inta, like, reaching for him. And they're, like, almost smiling at him underwater. And then they come up, and there's, like, it's like this reunion, and it's all cheery and happy. And then they get over out of the, out of the, um, out of the water. And, um, <laughs> Toei does this, like, huge smile, which is yeah. such a big uh difference from his like dead face in the in the uh detention center which yeah I, and it's like he rarely ever smiles so yeah he was a very angsty boy and now it's like he's not an angsty boy anymore oh my god you took the angst out of the boy that's boy with an eye by the way okay <laughs> um and then you think wow this 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 happy reunion this smiling like that's the end no then you get a fucking a second ed which is the op (laughs) and it's like the whole op plays and it's not even like mute the music of the op is playing over some more no the fucking op plays are you not happy with that no it's just different like i'm so used to in anime now especially these seasonal, like, you know, 11, 12, 13 episode anime that we get so much of these days, that either you get to the end and the ED music starts playing over the final scenes or the OP music starts playing over the final scenes, but you never actually see the OP or the ED. I'm not used to this, actually. Well, you've played all the ED music, and then you go straight into the OP. I'm like, well, that's new. Yeah, I didn't expect the OP to play. I thought they just skipped it. Yeah, I might, I might have expected the OP music to play, but not the actual OP. So, after the, after the, the, the OP plays, we get a second after credit scene, and it, so this, this after credit scene, we have what Kazuki, we have Inta and Toei in their cap of forms, right? And they're just staring right at the viewer, and with like almost these deadpan expressions, and they there's all- this text. Well. <laughs> So they always do have deadpan yes. expressions when they're in Kappa form, but they're never, they're very rarely staring straight at the screen. Um, but uh, there's this, like text that follows them as they're like on this boat going underneath a bridge, and it just says "Off to the Future." Second season confirmed. Like, what does that mean? I don't think there's going to be a second season, but Fuck you. I'm I want a second means, season. <laughs> I, 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 I am assuming that means that you know. Um, that the future that you saw is the future that they got. Oh yeah, we didn't mention, but like the future that was displayed in the leaking scene was only a possibility, not the truth. Mm-hmm. But um, that leaking scene made me want to definitely see a second season, and I'm taking this second after credit scene as confirmation that there is 100% a second season already in the works. 
And I want to watch it. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, I, I would say, I would say at this point, I'd be very, very surprised. But that leads us into what we're going to talk about to wrap this up. So this is the this is the final episode of Sarah's and my episode eleven. So show. What are what are your overall th- thoughts of Sarah's and my as you know a show? Oh my God, I don't know. You put me. Why don't you go first? <laughs> All right, so I will. I will. I'll go first. Um, I have to say, um, and I think you will agree with me on this. You and I very harshly underestimated what this show could be when we did our original season preview, where we discussed this. Oh, definitely. Um, this is another example of something I've talked about on the podcast before is that you cannot judge a an anime that you have not yet seen solely by its synopsis on Mal because if that were the case, you and I would never have started this show. Well, honestly, I wasn't even planning on starting this show, but like I heard uh, people talking about it and I'm like, okay, fine, I'll watch the first episode. And then I'm like, damn, that animation. <laughs> yeah um i don't uh, i just I, I was blown away because i like you i had no even inkling to even give this show a try after we had done our season preview and i started putting together shows that i was going to watch during the spring 2019 season um it just flew completely under my radar and like you of course you're the one that originally or you were the one that basically kicked me in the butt to start watching it um, and do these episode reviews with you. And I'm glad you did. But I also, before you had even told me anything, I had heard some stuff that's like, this is pretty good if people should check it out. And I'm like, eh, okay. But you kicking me in the butt telling me to watch it, that was what, that finally got me to watch it. Um, You're welcome. Glad I did, because overall, I think that Sarah Zenmai is something that's far greater than the sum of its parts. It is... A thoroughly engaging story in the sense that it doesn't spoon feed you anything at all and lets you figure it out for yourself as you go i genuinely appreciate stories that are written like that um it's one of the reasons i appreciate the monogatari series as much as i do and again we've made that comparison to the monogatari series so many times during these reviews but i think certainly in terms of its art direction and its animation direction you have to you have to acknowledge the similarities with the Monogatari series. Um, I don't know if if you have a, a different opinion on this, let me know. But um, I would say if you're someone out there who has not seen the Monogatari series yet, watch Sarah Zen my first and decide if you like this, then go watch the Monogatari series. This is a good primer for the Monogatari series. I mean, you might disagree with me on that. I don't know. Uh, sure. <laughs> you could you could call it a primer. Primer for bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. It's like there's so many people who are so intimidated by the Monogatari series. I'm like, well, try this first. This is 11 episodes. Try this first. If if this kind of storytelling, if this very cerebral, very um, uh. If, uh, surrealist storytelling isn't for you, it's a really good gauge that you might not like the Monogatari series at all. Um, but if you do, definitely give the Monogatari series a try. Um, it's turning into a Monogatari cast. Jesus Christ. Um, again, I got to give credit where credit is due. The OP is fantastic. The ED is fantastic. They're both insanely well animated. Um, there's so much subtle uh, foreshadowing in the OP. The... I don't even know the the method that they used to do it, but the fact that they blend uh, live action and animation in the ED so seamlessly was absolutely amazing. Uh, for that reason alone, I'm nominating it for ED of the Year um, at our end of the year awards ceremony. Um, the story, while being kind of slow at first, definitely picks up as it goes along. And the more you watch it, the more of the mystery gets, like, expunged to you. And as I said before, it doesn't spoon feed it to you. So it's very engaging is the only word that I can think of to describe the the way the story is written. What is your overall uh, impression? 
if I had to give it like a numerical uh, score, or just like a in a sentence or a phrase, I would say that it's a really good example of surrealist and cerebral storytelling. I see. It's good to know. Okay. Well, I have. If I had, if I had to, if I had to narrow it down to one sentence, that's what I would say. Okay. Well, I have four good things to say about uh, Sarah Zamai. First of all, it's very unique. I've never seen anything like this uh, in terms of how graphic it is uh, in one way. Uh, Also, like you said, the storytelling, um, the just how they formatted all the plot twists, how they withhold information um so that you can only guess at what is trying to go on what is actually going on and then Mm -hmm. giving you a chance to for this uh limited information to sink in and then finally letting you know what is actually happening i like that process that they repeat uh um, again and again and it's a very it's a very engaging uh process that see there's that word is that what you said engaging yeah i use it over and over again when i describe my thoughts on the month on the sarah's end line. yes it really engages you um so i think and it does it in a way that a lot of anime don't so it really stands out for me from the pack um i think that's all the unique aspects and my second most important thing or my second good thing i have to say about sarah's end line, is the uh, visual quality is amazing. Um, the animation sequences are great. Uh, and it maintains that throughout the entire run of the show. Well, I wouldn't say it through the entire run. It has a lot of really good sakuga. Um, and it is consistent. I wouldn't say it's yeah. like fully, always, 100% of the time uh fair enough amazing animation but it has a lot of really great animation so that's my second good thing third is that it is gay af (laughs) (laughs) and i don't get a lot of gay stuff so i'm gonna take it and fourth is that i really connected connected with (laughs) the characters and i thought the characters were really uh, they really were sold to me, except for the police officers. I don't like the police officers. <laughs> <laughs> but the three main characters, they really sold them for me. Like, all of their problems and their struggles and their insecurities, I really felt like I understood them and was able to experience them. And it was a really great... Uh, I don't know, run, uh, you know, getting to know these characters. So I really loved the, how they portrayed uh, the three main characters. And yeah, yeah so those are what, it, what the good things I have to say about the show. The only bad thing I have to say is that Kazuki is still an ignorant buffoon. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't going to change and you knew it yes uh, I thought it was going to change nah, I held out happening. hope okay I did not appreciate did not appreciate the how Enta's arc ended up that's I... the only thing I have to say bad about the show overall I want to say that it's like a one of its kind uh, show and it really can't be replicated, and it's really its own experience. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I ha- it had its rough spots, but it definitely redeemed itself in the end. Oh yeah, it definitely. It definitely wasn't perfect. It had its moments where it sort of faltered a little bit, but I would say overall, it did its job really well. And I think it has really good rewatchability, just because of all. Oh yeah. The- all, all the, the like the symbology hints. and yeah, yes. I would love to go through again and rewatch it just so I because I know now to start watching for <laughs> symbols. Yeah, there's a lot of embedded small details that they put in there, which is interesting mm-hmm. to pick out. 
So yeah, and of course, again, like the Monogatari series, there's lots of text in the background sometimes that you know maybe on a, a second rewatch you might go watch it and, and say I didn't notice that before. I've, that kind of goes into what we talked about before. I think from the first episode, the Azamasara Idol, uh, I don't know, broadcasts uh, in the text. Uh, what do you call it? Ribbon beneath them. She talks about loving her prince is actually yes. we know now is the uh kepi so yes so just little little tidbits like that but yeah i i i was very pleased i was surprised yet pleased with the overall result of sarah zen Mai. what about you i was shocked but i really enjoyed my time with it yeah uh if you had to give it an uh numer- well what what numerical score are you going to give this out of 10 a kappa out of a frog. Keto. <laughs> a keto out of ten. <laughs> I I think that this this may change, but I think I'm going to end up giving this probably an eight out of ten. You know, the average on Mal is a seven point five right now. Or seven point seven eight actually. Anyways, around there. Um so, which I was surprised. I thought it would be higher rated. Yeah, I, I don't think that many people actually started it. Or at least have it on their list. So that might have something to do with it. No, that has um, nothing to do with... That's not how Mal works, Alex. No, I'm just saying that, that it the average score... It's not a lot of, you know, people to draw a score from. Well, in the... Not t- like One Punch Man that's being watched by like a billion fucking people. It doesn't matter how many people watch it. That doesn't affect the aggregate score. And also, the top reviewers of Sarah's Am I all rotate or revolve around the seven point whatever. Yes. Anywhere between seven and eight, yeah. Yeah. Which I find surprising. They just don't understand. I don't know. Give it some time. I think that after this season's over, there might be a spike in people watching it, though, so it'll get more score more people scoring it but okay. yeah that that's that's sarah's and my uh, it's been a hell of a ride um and doing these episode reviews has been fun um we definitely need to do this again in the future yes we do Unfortunately, um, we are currently thinking about maybe picking up a show that airs during the summer season at some point and doing this of course by the time this comes out it'll be halfway through the summer season um Unless I decided to up start uploading two of these a week, which I might do, um, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely let you know on our Facebook group and page uh, what we decide to do going forward. Um, we haven't made a decision yet about what we're going to be looking at for summer, but we definitely want to do more of these episode by episode reviews because I think I don't, can't speak for you, but I personally enjoy doing them. Oh yeah, it was really fun. So yeah, that was Sarah. That was uh, Studio Mappa's Sarah Zanmai. Thank you all out there for dropping in to listen to us. We hope you enjoyed it because we always enjoy bringing this stuff to you. If you want to check out previous episodes of the podcast, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. If you want to keep up with what we're doing, you can join us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Shoot us an email if you have any questions or comments, or if you have any ideas for topics you would like us to talk about in the future, or shows you'd like us to do episode by episode reviews of. Links to all of these things will be down below in the description. As always, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say Sada Zen my show. Sada. Sada. Sada Sada Zen my. Oh my God, I'm cringing.